Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, the presentation today is to explain to you or discuss the requirements for this research report that you'll be writing uh, for the Econ 307 uh, class. Uh, and so the way to think about it is this. You've been asked by a store manager to give her advice on pricing of a particular item in her store. And my example uh, in, in the one I'm talking about is the Delanger toaster oven sold at Macy's at Nordstrom's. So the first thing is you're going to be evaluating the demand for a specific product at a specific location. Everybody with me? That's your focus. She wants advice on pricing. And the advice could be, I recommend you raise price a little. I recommend you lower price. I recommend you keep the price the same. Everybody with me? Those are the three possible conclusions that you might reach. The way you're going to approach this is with your understanding of elasticity of demand uh, and understanding that if you can identify whether the buyers are very elastic, then you may recommend a price decline, right? Because it increases total revenue. If you recognize by looking at the number and closeness of substitutes that demand for this product at that store is inelastic, then you'd probably recommend raising the price uh, in, that, in that particular way. Or you might, whatever you find, you might recommend keeping the price uh, the same. So the first part of the, of the written description just tells you about the product you're going to be turning in to me. Um, it will be a report. Do not put covers on it as you would if you were giving it to a client, but just put a cover page on the front and, and, and staple it. Um, and um, where is it? And the paper should not be longer than eight pages double spaced. Uh, that's like a maximum. People keep asking me, how long should it be? And the answer is, as long as it takes to do the things that I'm going to say need to be done for it to be a good paper. So, but it's somewhere between six and eight pages, or something. That's not an absolute, but uh, uh, something in that in that range, most likely. Good. So, number one, you identify your own product at a location, and then you're going to be estimating elasticity based on the availability and 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 closeness of other products. So, number one, you would look at what other products are there in that location, which would serve as close substitutes for your product. Excuse me. My product was the uh, Delanger, come on, come on. Here it is. My product is the Delanger toaster oven from uh, uh, um, Macy's. Okay, good. So. Across, I'm putting in my product at my store, and then I'm identifying what substitute products are for sale at that store, which a buyer might consider close substitutes. So there's the Delanger, there's the GE toaster oven, there's the Samsung toaster oven, there's several probably that are there. I would look at those that are most similar to mine, uh, and I would identify them as potential substitutes in the minds of the buyer. So you want to gather information about the qualities of your product, the qualities of the substitute products, and the prices of your product and the substitutes. Now, if it's on sale, use the sale price. It's whatever the buyer would actually be paying. Everybody with me? Right? Good. Uh, uh, and so you do that for your store, first of all. Then you put yourself in the mind of that same consumer, and you'd say, where else might he go to look to buy a toaster oven? Well, the common places I would suggest are Best Buy is a substitute, Costco, uh, Bed, Bed Bath & Beyond is, is a, a substitute location. So you want to identify the other locations uh, uh, where they may want to buy a, a product, including your product from a different location. And then the same thing, identify the qualities, identify the price of the substitutes at uh, those locations. So I have the locations on the horizontal and the products on the, uh, on the vertical. So the next row down at store B, you'd put the price of substitute number one. Uh, maybe that one's not carried at your location, right? So it'd be NA. Uh, but you'd fill in this table of relative prices. If the products are different sizes 
then you need to set the prices per ounce. For example, if you were doing face creams, Dove face cream, you might have one that's 12 ounces, another one that's 10 ounces. Well, to make a price comparison, you need to price it per ounce, so you're getting equal uh, comparison that way. So you're going to build this table of, of relative uh, prices. Going back for a minute, in the introduction section, you would be explaining to them what it is I'm going to be doing in the report, uh, just like you would normally, right? Uh, uh, I'm, I, I'm evaluating the... I, I, I'm, I've been asked to look at alternative pricing structures for this particular product. The way I'm going to go about doing that is by estimating the elasticity of demand based on the number and closeness of substitute products. Something along that line, kind of a paragraph about that. You might even include a little bit about if I discover it's elastic or inelastic, what your recommendation might be at that way. Then your next section is the pricing matrix of them. Now, it, it is not, it doesn't mean they're going to be uh, three locations and they're going to be, or four locations and they're going to be three products. That's just an example. If you, your product is something like, like Dove Facial Cream from CVS, you might have 10 substitutes at the same location, right? That, or, or five or seven that you think are very similar. And then buying facial cream, I'm not going to shop around a lot for relative prices. So you might only have two locations, right? Uh, uh, might be Vaughn's, which is in the same shopping center, or it might be uh, um, Rite Aid or something uh, like that. If instead your product is a 42-inch Samsung 3D television set, then there are not going to be a whole lot of substitutes for that. Obviously, it would be a 3D television set. It would be 42 inches. But you might have fewer alternatives, but then you might have more places to look to buy it. Uh, and as you all know, the, the higher an item is in price, the more you tend to be willing to shop around to find a better price uh, for it. You may use online as an alternative location to buy it from online. You must use a brick-and-mortar location for your store. Everybody got it? Your store has to be a place, right? But a substitute from buying it from them would be buying it from Amazon. Or if it's electronics, buying it from... Um, Is it H and L photo, H and M photo, huh? Yeah, B and H photo could be an alternative, which is where I bought mine uh, from. Um, so that can be that can be a substitute. Now, when you include that, remember that you need to incorporate shipping if if you have to pay for shipping, uh, uh, whatever the customer would actually uh, have to pay. Uh, um, so you've identified the substitutes now. You've identified the relative prices in in the matrix. The next section is where you'll be comparing the qualities of these products with your product. And the reason for doing that is to try and identify how similar are they as a substitute. How close a substitute uh, is it? If you have some item from, from Ralph's and then Gelson's is one of your substitutes, uh, uh, and you've identified substitute products at Gelson's. Almost all of them will most likely be more expensive at Gelson's than they are at Ralph's. Everybody with me? Good. Well, then you'd want to explain why that is the case, because the quality of the shopping at Gelson's is a much more pleasant experience than at Ralph's. They have people that speak English. They have people who know where products are. Uh, uh, and so, so, so that is showing that they may be close substitutes because the higher price is reflecting buying better quality uh, of service uh, in that particular way. The same thing with the with the with the toaster ovens. You know, uh, mine might not have a timer on it, and it sells for uh, ninety eight dollars. And then there's a GE that has the same capacity, same wattage, but it has a light inside, and that might be for a uh, hundred and ten dollars. Well, then that help explains why that is still a close substitute because the $10 is going for an additional characteristic. And the same thing for products that are cheaper than yours that don't have the same uh, kinds of, of activities. Good. So there's your section of comparing quality. You can use CNET online as a place to get information about relative quality of electronics. You can use Consumer Reports, which also ranks products in terms and, and lists their different characteristics and, and ratings of them. Uh, um, 
and information from the manufacturers uh, uh, or, or, or your own personal uh, uh, evaluation. When somebody did Smirnoff's vodka uh, and he was doing the, the, the substitutes were Grey Goose and uh, um, Patron and some other ones. And then he talked about, and you know, there's literature written about the taste of the various ones. And then he gave his own personal opinion about this one's better because of this and so forth. So that's your quality section. Then you're going to reach your conclusion at the end, and that is based on what I've presented with respect to what are the substitutes and what are the relative prices and qualities, I, I believe demand is highly elastic, or I believe demand is somewhat elastic, somewhat inelastic, very inelastic. Those are your four possible qualitative conclusions. And then based on that, you'd make your pricing recommendation. Uh, if you think it's very elastic, then you might say, uh, you, you may want to consider putting this on sale uh, because uh, uh, there are lots of close substitutes, but, you know, demand would be responsive in, in that particular way. So that's the product. And then the instructions on submission, you're going to give me a hard copy in class on May 9th, which is the last class meeting before the final, before the final. So you want to bring the paper at that time uh, uh, in a hard copy. That same day, by 5 p.m., you need to email me a soft copy, electronic copy, of the paper. Now, this is critical for the email submission. Make sure that the subject of the email is exactly what it says here. Uh, E307.Tuesday.YourLastName.RSH.RPT. It has to be exactly in that format because I, I turn it in to turn it in, and all of them have to have exactly the same uh, format. So number one, the subject has to be that, and then the title of the document has to be the same thing. You all with me? The title of the file has to be exactly, uh, exactly the same thing. Um, and, and be sure and get it precise, uh, because that's required. So pick something that you're interested in. I mean, pick some, this, is, this is a fun project. Pick something you're thinking about buying. Uh, you know, it, it, guys have done skis, guys have done TV sets. Somebody did um, the different carriers, Verizon versus T-Mobile versus AT&T or something like that, which is a little bit harder, uh, harder to do. Um, but, you know, find some product that you're interested in researching and then, and then do it that way. And then ask me questions as you go along. I mean, don't hesitate to email me. Tell me what your product is and... and uh, uh, and, and, you know, if you have questions about whether that will work or not, uh, let me know, and I'm happy to, uh, to give you guidance. So questions you guys have now? Uh, yeah, with that light bulb thing, so is it possible for our, like when I'm doing that diagram, our product, our store, above and below it's going to be NA, like that specific product, the way it is, might not be available for the console. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Yeah. No, 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 that's why you have, like, blanks in here where that particular product is not for sale, right? And, and by the way, as you know, buying the same Delanger toaster oven from Best Buy is a very close substitute for buying it from Macy's. Everybody with me? I mean, most of these things, unless it's single-sourced, uh, 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 like 501 jeans, uh, you can normally find these products at multiple locations, uh, and, there, and there usually is some price variability. Sometimes they're fair trade priced, and that means that the prices are the same at all the different locations because the manufacturer required them uh, to do that. But um, So, so you know, students often ask me questions about, well, would this be a substitute? And my answer is, my answer is put yourself in the mind of the guy who's interested in buying this product and then think from their perspective. Would, would that be a close substitute, right? And if you, yes, then you'd include it, right? stuff like that. So you could have lots of close substitutes and not as many locations or fewer actual items but more locations. So those are the two, uh, the two trade-offs. But, but limit it to what, what your buyer would be willing to do right? Uh, uh, guys have done models of cars, although that's difficult because you don't know the negotiated price. You can quote resale, the, the manufacturer's suggested price, but that 
the price you can get it from differs substantially from store uh, from store to store.